Hello, I am Mamadou Burch and welcome to um, State of Affairs. Um, for our regular viewers, you're not having double vision. I'm obviously not Alex Sisi, and this is not the viewpoint. It just happens that this week, Sisi Kunda, as we call them, Ali and Sisi and, and Sidi, are not available. Um, the regulars will also know, and for the benefit of people joining us for the first time, that on State of Affairs, we invite prominent personalities in positions of decision making in key organizations, if not exactly to give account, but at least to have a conversation of the activities in their organizations. And today, I've got my comrade, Adi Darami. To, <laughs> to, to was, my uh, co-pilot for today. I wish you hadn't said that. I was going to pretend to be CDC. <laughs> but no. uh, yes, um, as a fan of this uh, program, I'm really pleased to be here and, and actually uh, co-hosting and co-presenting. That's it. Who could have guessed yeah. that at some point you will co-host this? <laughs> um, today, we are going to talk about higher education, research, science, and technology. And who better <laughs> to invite than the minister himself of that very ministry? Professor Per Gomez. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mbouj and uh, Mr. Darame, for having me. Pleasure. Y you're, you're welcome. Um, carpet crossing, of course, from academia to politics. Mm. <laughs> this is not unusual. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of the most famous carpet crossers, <laughs> President Obama. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> but I wonder, how would you describe your own transition? from academia, the professor <laughs> gives it away, <laughs> to, 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 to politics now. How do you depict your own transition? Are you still transitioning? Uh, well, right now, <laughs> I have to, because I have not given time by the students and the <laughs> staff to continue transitioning. <laughs> to some extent, I had to now uh, at least uh, start uh, taking actions. And uh, yes, it's something different because uh, for 25 good years I've been in the classroom, mm -hmm. in academia, uh, touching and higher education for that matter. So <laughs> I did not do any other job, you know, I was not that lucky <laughs> like others. Sure. So this is the first time I'm now coming out from uh, uh, the university to do policy, uh, you know, work. And uh, yeah, so it's something interesting. But the good thing is, uh, it's something you know within academia, sure. solving now the problems that I saw out there, sure. together with uh, the team that I have at the ministry, and also in different satellite institutions uh, that we have uh, with government uh, stakeholders and everybody. You know we. This is what we are trying to do now. Sure. So before we delve into mm. that, if I could just jump in quickly. I mean, when the call came uh, mm. for you to be uh, offered the yeah. position, uh, was it a difficult decision? Because it's, it's, it's quite a jump. And, and, and as you yes, said, because uh, not that difficult as mm. addition. But right. the thing is, <laughs> I was not, uh, you know, expecting the, the call. Quite That's it. Because me, I'm... Um, Two weeks before, I was in Brikama, you know, arranging chairs, right, uh, right. trying to fix uh, the challenges that the students were facing on campus. Sure. You know, so somebody was telling, "But you, how can you be DVC academic out there in kind of thing? You come to Brikama here, be arranging chairs. Uh, people should do this job, mm -hmm. and uh, not you." I said, "But yeah, since there's a problem, let's fix it. Sure. Then later we can we can talk." Mm -hmm. So even later, when I, whilst I was doing it, students joined me to okay. even fix the problem. Okay. By the time I left uh, Brikama, together with the students, we were able to fix uh, at least uh, six classrooms okay. that they did not have before. And then, you know, when I came, I continued also my lectures. That day, I was heading to the classroom, right. supposed to have lectures with the PhD students. Right. <laughs> then the phone rang. Oh, wow. So when the phone rang, I thought that I was, you know, there's some, the students <laughs> are making noise somewhere, right. chairs not right, available. Right. So can you explain, you know, this is as that's usual, what, because that's, that's what I normally do. Sure. Whenever there are issues, I go f right. come forward and see what we can do. So I, was, I thought that I was called to explain maybe what is going on so mm -hmm. that I can uh, find solutions and so on. But 
uh, on, on the phone, I was not told the, the raison d'etre of the call. Right. But I said, I have clarity, but it's urgent. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, okay, then let me finish the, the, my lectures uh, 30 minutes before time, then right. I'll come. That's how later when I went, I was told. So, I was, <laughs> I said, wow. You were pleasantly surprised. <laughs> yes. Right. Because you hadn't canvassed for it. No, no, exactly. no, 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 so, yeah, no not at all. So, yeah, and you had so no hint at all. No, not at all. at all. That's why it yeah. was surprised. a, yeah, go ahead. you know, because I said for me it was, I thought that was because maybe students are having chairs problem, you know, there are some other issues that need to be addressed. Sure. So that's because we always work on emergency. Yeah, okay. So firefighting here and there because of uh, some of the, the challenges and so on. And uh, as DVC academic, uh, it's my role to come forward and, you know, uh, look at the issues. And even when I was uh, the acting vice chancellor, so I had to come forward. Right. The leadership is not running away from the bullet when, it is, when things go uh, difficult. Uh, so when things are difficult. So I came forward and uh, was doing that. And, yeah, but then <laughs> later, you know, the... The president, little did I know that he was also following. Right. You see, so yes. that's, that's why sometimes whatever you do, just do it for the common good as enshrined in our national anthem. And he right narrated thing. certain things, sure. you know, he went back to 2017 wow. and all those things. So we, for me, I thought that uh, nobody was paying attention to all those stuff. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Important lesson there. Somebody's always paying attention, really. <laughs> um, um, today, what we want to discuss, really, um, to sort of create a kind of country status profile of higher education here, the different elements, higher education, research, mm -hmm. and, and, and the like. And you tell us, what is your vision? Yes. What would you hope to uh, achieve? Your, your strategies as yeah. well. What yeah. strategies do you have? And of course, the resources. Exactly. <laughs> so I just want us to go through this key Perfect. areas of your, your ministry, right? Exactly. Um, to, to begin with the, the, the profile. When you went in there, I'm not sure whether you've had time mm -hmm. to look at the state of affairs, <laughs> if you like, of things. How would you characterize um, your, 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 your ministry? Well, these, uh, is when I went, I now realized that this ministry uh, has been confirmed that it was under, under finance, seriously under finance. Uh, we ministry that doesn't have many resources. Right. Uh, and uh, and but the expectation expectations are very high. Mm -hmm. So ministry that has satellite institutions, the University of the Gambia, Gambia College, uh, MDI, GTTI, NACA, yeah. and all those. And look at this population of all these things. And then the the uh, these are public institutions. They are not private. You know. We also manage the private, too. but the private you can understand they are private. Yeah. But the public, it means that the services needs to be offered on behalf of the Gambian people. It means it's a public service. Sure. So it, when when we talk about public service, it means that there's a certain intervention, mm. but that's not uh, there. Uh, we did not have enough of that. That's what I found out. And the, the Farababanta campus, uh, you know, noticed that, uh, you know, it's lasted for 12 good years now uh, since it all started and uh, six years since the contract uh, started. Yes. And, uh, you know, the story of the challenges of the students and lecturers, you all know it. Indeed. So, and this is what I found. So I later realized also that, you know, contrary to what we thought at the beginning, that there was money there waiting and so on and so forth. I I mean, there was actually an interview where you said that you expected it to be completed by October 2020. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 2022. Yes. 2022. So I thought that the money was there mm -hmm. and to be able to do that. And so now I have to realize that, yes, the money that was available was for the first uh, uh, Part space, lot yeah. uh, lot one, mm -hmm. and that's the one that uh, is roughly ready now. That uh, the ninety-two percent. Uh, yes, ninety-two percent completion. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, QTV did a very good uh, work by using drones to be able to for people to see, 
uh, you know, the, but then the rest of the other faculties, the rest of other works and so on and so forth, no funding. So we now <laughs> we now realize that I have to go with the thanks to the you know dynamic uh, leadership of the minister of, minister of finance yeah. uh, or the Volketa. Yes. The guy, this guy knows uh, numbers and right. he knows the, he, his area. Yeah, so you know we able to now start mobilizing funds uh, with our Arab partners and uh, to be able to fund the rest of the other schools yeah. and so on. the process is on. Okay. But this is one of the challenges. The other thing also is, uh, we'll come back to that, the Tibet part of it Which also. And then we don't have uh, enough funding. In, yes, in essence, sure. the resources, sure. that's where we will need, uh, we, that's where we had issues and we are trying to work on those sure. ones. Uh, because uh, when Mr. Mboja and I were discussing this program, I said something to him. I said, if you ask most people in many countries, what's the most important ministry? Many of them would say finance. But for me, because it's my obsession, I've always said education, not because you're sitting here. Yeah. Um, but if any country is serious about moving forward, then education has to be something that is properly resourced. Otherwise, you, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Drame, you are right. And I wish everybody listens to that wisdom that you've said. Mm -hmm. All developed countries use education. Sure. Because they saw education as an investment. Yeah. And I've been engaging stakeholders, telling them that uh, if you do not invest in education, then you cannot get a, a good medical system. Exactly. Because it's the education that produces the doctors. Yeah. It is the education that will produce the teachers. And these are the teachers who will teach everybody. Agriculture, the same thing, and other areas. So it is the, it is the, the, the mother of all the sectors. True. And uh, you take go to uh, other places like Finland. Finland is what it is. It is exactly uh, because they, uh, they realize exactly what you are talking about. That education should be the priority. True. So the best. Go to education. Mr. Mboji knows that I always use a much closer yeah. example, but carry on. But so very competitive. It yeah, means yeah, sure, also sure. For, in Finland, yeah. not everybody, many are called sure, sure. to be even teachers, yeah. but, but few uh, are chosen. Indeed, indeed. Because it's the best that go, yeah. and they pay them well. Awesome. And everybody wants to come. So it becomes very competitive. Sure. But in other parts of the world, in Africa and some it's, it's, it's education becomes a dead end street, mm -hmm. a place where you are when you have nowhere else to go, when you are not needed anywhere else. Just go and teach, yeah, as if good. this is a dumping ground. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When in actual fact, is the best that should be there. Indeed. You see, so these are some of the issues and uh, that we need to look at. Sure. And the moment you invest in education. You see your life start changing. Sure. You start seeing the quality. And I give you the case of, uh, of, uh, of South Korea. And you could see the way they use mm. education okay. to change. Yeah. And uh, South Korea in, uh, 1906, uh, in 1960 was having, their GDP was $90. <laughs> $90. Right. OK? 2022. Is thirty five thousand yeah. dollars. South Korea doesn't have uh, natural, natural resources, resources like the yeah. Gambia. Quite, quite. But South Korea is the uh, sixth leading exporting nation in the world. South Korea doesn't have oil, but South Korea is exporting oil. Mm -hmm. How can that? It's education. These people will go and buy the crude oil and take it to, uh, to South Korea, transform it, yeah. and start s selling it. But later, when they decide this is that's wasting time, so they are now they build the ships and they will just go get it from the source in the, uh, in the process, uh, transform it. Sure. They don't need to come back to South Korea, just directly to the market. 
you go to even uh, in the Middle East, mm. you go to uh, Dubai, Dubai and other parts of uh, even uh, uh, Saudi, some areas, so people will see those towers and so on. Some are built by South Korean. Mm. They mm. exported mm. knowledge. That's, 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 yes, that's we can do that. Uh, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in our country, it's a different um, um, ball game. I've heard this said um, already. You've, you've given us um, how resource strapped really the ministry is. But I've heard this argument that there is this push, this drive, you will change MDI into a degree awarding. GTTI would become the university, isn't it, of applied sciences and, and the like. Why not? invest in this one, the University of the Gambia, strengthen it, because this lack of resources, would it be replicated in all these new institutions that we want to build? So we might have the inputs, but maybe when it comes to the learning outputs, they wouldn't be quite as high. Mm. As we've seen in a recent um, World Bank report, not regarding tertiary education, I think it was more of secondary, basic and secondary education, yeah. but they realized that. At the level of input, you will have many um, lecturers and all the like, but the quality of the education, the outcome itself, because of the lack of resources. So all these institutions, but they're churning out perhaps people who are not up to the job. Now, the, the reality is, we talk about quality and so on and so forth, but the reality is, uh, for 57 good years, we have not invested in higher education. We've talked about it. We've talked about it. We, we did a, yep. a, a, a lot and so on, but serious investment sure. wasn't there. And you know, you ca who, pro who teaches the t uh, these teachers? Indeed. Who will now go to primary school, uh, senior, junior secondary, and senior secondary? Mm. You need that. That's a tertiary and higher education. You you cannot. Uh, you know you can you know you can play with the game mm. and sometimes you can you <coughs> can win but not all the time the process must be complete you see you, you we know the uh, what is in the archive when the colonial masters what did they do yes. they said they when they came up they said for the gambia this is the type of education they need we train you at this level we stop that's what they did. Yeah. They did not need anybody, even high school product, they did not need. Yeah. Later we came, for us, instead of now changing completely the whole pa uh, system, we now just went to high school and so on and so forth, and we stopped there. Sure. You see, universities, the sub-region, and so on and so forth. When we decided now to do, now have our own university, you know, we did not also do it properly. So what we are doing now is uh, trying to reposition, to signpost our education, our education system. You see, the, uh, the, the UTG will be at, uh, at Faraba and with the different campus, uh, the new campus that is being built, uh, they will have their own programs doing the traditional uh, university programs. Sure. But then uh, there's now a new University of Applied Science and Technology, right. USET, that will now concentrate on engineering. That will help us to produce for the first time since our independence, mm. homegrown engineers. I'm glad you mentioned this because when we did a program last week mm -hmm. um, about the new intake, mm -hmm. um, uh, business and public finance, mm -hmm. 452. Yes. Engineering, 29. Yes. I, was, I, was, I told Mr. Amboj I was shocked. Mm -hmm. If we are serious as a nation, this is where we should be going. But how do we, we okay, you say you said, how do we encourage people to switch towards something like that? It's all right building it, but how do we get people to attend it? Yes, because what there are two issues. Let me just explain also something very important here. Mm. Uh, you know, the World Bank uh, came to a conclusion that uh, they've been supporting African countries, uh, and African countries also have been also investing mm. 
and sending by sending their you know uh, citizens to the west uh, for training mm -hmm. but they've realized that uh, many after receiving that training will end up staying they, they not stay. coming back yep. Yep. so it means that we are training for the west and the gap will still be there so now they decided that maybe the best option is uh, to support some universities so that within Africa they can train their own people and other Africans right. hence the uh, Africa Center of Excellence mm -hmm. is yeah. World Bank Africa Center of Excellence so some years ago they uh, started it and the Gambia was not uh, uh, part of those who would be the one receiving the uh, how to call it, getting that grant as centers of excellence mm -hmm. so uh, however the, we since uh, our case is different from others so we were given given the opportunity to off, uh, uh, to join those centers send our people to those centers for training right. with funding grants from the world bank that's helped us to send hundreds of Gambians. Many people do not know because there was not many publicity yeah, out of, of it. Yeah. Many, many Gambians in the sub-region, okay. in Nigeria, uh, in Ghana, mm -hmm. in Cameroon, you know, uh, in Senegal. But Senegal, they, we, we got some Belgian University. They, they came here at sure. UN, uh, UTG sure. and run the program here. I was the academic coordinator okay. for physics, chemist, uh, uh, for uh, statistics, mathematics, and computer science right. at master's level. Sure. Uh, just for that group, they train nothing less than 90 at master's level okay. uh, uh, in, in, uh, in statistics, ma uh, ma uh, mathematics, and computer science. And most of those people came from the planning departments of the, uh, most of these ministries sure. and agencies. Mm. So have, Some have they returned? Have they returned? No, no, they, they they were, still, that was the, yeah, they're, they're here. They're here. Right. So most of, most of them are from these departments. Some are now uh, deputy permanent secretaries. Some are directors right. uh, and so on and so forth. Some have moved on to occupy key positions. Then now you have others who uh, were reading engineering in Cameroon, Yaoundé. Uh, some were in medicine. So if you take, for instance, this UTG uh, Department of Nursing, mm -hmm. roughly the leadership nice. of the current UTG uh, you know, Department of Nursing were trained from that. They got their PhDs. And the good thing is they have a majority of them were women trained at PhD level in Nigeria. And they all came back with flying colors through that program. Mm -hmm. And others also in other, other fields in agriculture, you know, in uh, bio, bio, biochemistry, and so on and so forth. In all these areas, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. Later now, that project was to phase out, and the World Bank was to come up with another project, the second phase. Right. And, you know, the Gambia uh, now change uh, a strategy mm -hmm. by coming up with another alternative. Right. Instead of giving us money to be sending our people to other countries, right. and he, because we do not have the, the manpower here, the resources, sure. why can't we build, help, why can't you help us build the uh, structure, the system here, yeah. no. so that we ha can have more people you know, the World Bank uh, say no at the beginning. Right. Because what the Gambia is asking now is far more than what uh, uh, Gambia was receiving or what uh, the Gambia will receive sure. if we have to send our people to the other countries. Sure. Because what did we say? We say now, can we use GTTI, which is technical? Yes to upgrade it into, uh, transform it into a university of applied science yep. and technology. Yep. That will be hands-on, uh, you know, uh, programs, sure. like engineering, purely on engineering. 
people who will come out and they can fix the, the problem. So at the beginning, a lot of explanation so what, is the extent, what is the extent of the support? So is it to build the structures, build yes. the trained personnel who would be the lecturers? The yes. So yes. what is the extent of the support, I wonder, from the World Bank? So finally, yeah, the, the World Bank now later bought the idea. Mm -hmm. Now they will they support this uh, uh, training. And as I'm talking to you, we have many Gambians now in, uh, in Ghana okay. do reading engineering who, will, who are coming to USET. Right. So you see, we are not waiting for mm -hmm. USET to be completely f finished before training people. We send them ahead of time. But you see, what, what is interesting is some who we train at master's level, you know, in other universities, uh, and who and who re re return, and uh, some of them are the ones that we are also uh, we also send right. to Ghana, okay. also PhD. for uh, their PhDs. PhD. Uh -huh. So when they come, they now join again the USET. And uh, to cut the long story short, the we uh, we uh, we got the funding for the uh, the personnel to be trained in uh, these different areas. We now also get funding for the first phase of uh, the campus uh, that will be built in Brikama. And very soon, uh, uh, the construction uh, will, will start. And that will cater for uh, mechanical engineering, civil engineering, and electrical engineering. Mm -hmm. So uh, this, these are issues that we are working on. But there will be another phase that we roll out the other uh, components like computer right. engineering and other stuff. Mm -hmm. But this one is applied. Yeah. We don't want to do anything too theoretical there. Hands on. Sure. So we, you look so at that's the, more of a Tibet. Yes. <coughs> Tibet. Yeah, yeah, yes. The, yes uh, Tibet. Similar. Yes. Yeah, similar. Because what is going to happen is you have the engineers who will now come up with their design. Yes. But at the lower level now, that's the where yes. we now have this. We're going to have regional Tibet centers. Uh, I'm glad mm -hmm. you mentioned it because mm -hmm. I, one of my questions, Good. but carry exactly. on. Because uh, the reason I was going to bring the whole thing about is when we did the recent story, it was that 75% of them are in Banjul and Greater Banjul area. And that's unsustainable if we're serious about Tibet, really. Exactly. So uh, what is the plan now for taking this nationwide and making it happen nationwide? We, this is the, the uh, paradigm shift yes, yes. Uh, with uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Higher Education, Research, Science and Technology. Mm -hmm. But because uh, we cannot talk about democracy, full democracy, if uh, now the rest of the population cannot have access to uh, touch and higher education. Right. If, if uh, when everything is concentrated in the Greater Banyu area, mm -hmm. and you see, failure to do so is going to create problems for for this country. Yeah. Failure to decentralize, sure. because by concentrating all the institutions in the Greater Banyu area, you are telling the youths out there that you have to leave the provinces and come, come yeah. to the combos. Sure. And that is what we call now rural urban migration. Yeah, sure. Problem number one. Mm -hmm. Problem number two, when they come to the greater Banyu area mm -hmm. and every, everybody co be uh, congested here and not providing all the resources and whatever, with the disillusionment of what people thought that the greater Banyu area was going to offer them, and that not taking uh, taking place. The next step now is the illegal uh, uh, international migration, commonly known as uh, you know the Bagway Bag syndrome. Mm -hmm. So now having uh, regional Tibet centers will address these two uh, challenges, and that will help now the youths uh, wherever they are, uh, they are in their regions to stay there and get the right skills, uh, the right training. And what we, up, uh, we are planning to do is in many of our Tibet centers, there will be uh, multi-purpose uh, uh, you know, uh, programs. There will be multi-purpose centers where you will have uh, 
training on uh, auto mechanic, on plumbing, on uh, uh, you know, tailoring, yeah. and so on and so forth. Sure. Uh, because we need the, uh, these people. But then there's one also like in, in uh, CRR. Uh, in November, we are going back again. We, have we went there before and identified the, the sites already, two sites, north and south of Sierra. Uh, in Kuntawur, we're going to have a multi-purpose center, not far from the area council. But then in Sapo, and you, you all know uh, the symbolism of Sapo, fresh water 24-7, yet you will be importing onions from your neighbor. The same geography. Uh, uh, professor, we'll just, we'll just hold it there. We'll go for a short break. <laughs> we'll be right back. Thank you. Espace Motors is the largest and most modern auto service in the Gambia. Espace Motors is the only authorized dealer in Chevy. Mercedes-Benz trucks. Mercedes-Benz buses. Kia. Ford, Futon Mini and Midi buses, Futon trucks. At Espas Motors, we have qualified professionals who use modern technology to diagnose and repair all brands of motor vehicles. Espas Motors services include auto sales, auto repairs, vehicle painting, availability of high quality spare parts, towing services. We are reachable at any time. Call Espas Motors on 35 Double two, double two, two, three five three, double four, double four, or locate us on the Bertel Harding Highway. Espas Motors. Looking for the fastest and easiest way to receive money transfers from abroad? Well, Q Money and RIA just made it happen. Now you can receive international money transfer from RIA directly into your Q Money account with no additional cost. Once you receive an SMS alert about your transfer, walk into any Q Money agent across the country to receive your payment for free or use the money immediately to buy credit, QPower, and other Q Money services. It's fast, safe, and convenient. For more info, call Customer Care on 133 Q Money, Sunu Kalpe. Terms and conditions apply. Welcome, you're watching um, State of Affairs. I'm Mugudu Boch. I'm today my co-host, my co-pilot. It's my comrade, um, Adedarami, as I said earlier on. Sisa Kunda, they're not available th this week. Our guest today is Professor Poer Gomez, the Minister of um, um, Higher Education, Science, Research, and, and, and Technology. Um, uh, Professor, yes, just before we went on the break, we were talking about diversifying, as it were, taking Tibet centers to the, region, to the regions, as it were. Really, I'm continuing about Yes, yes. And uh, we talk about, uh, for instance, CRR, mm -hmm. uh, like Sapo. Sapo and Sapo, you have fresh water, 24 7. Year round. You don't need to wait for a uh, re rainy season, like we do here in the Greater Banjo area, to, to now have uh, no farming. Mm -hmm. There, with the water, you can do farming all the time. So what we want to do there is agribusiness, mm -hmm. agribusiness. Okay. I uh, have a program that will train people hands on on agriculture. It cannot be classroom yeah. agriculture sure. or, you know, Sarakundak agriculture. So you need to practice, you know, from the classroom to the farm, practical, you see? So, so it means that it will be uh, residential. So uh, students and staff will be staying there. And uh, now they will also be doing research there too. And they will produce what they eat. They, don't, they will not buy from others. They will produce what they will be eating there. And they will even sell what they produce and what they will generate now the funds to come back to support the, the, the center in addition to whatever subvention they would have received from government. I'm glad you mentioned that, particularly in the context of agriculture, yes. because uh, there's a project that's been going on in Syria for a number of years now. In order to get, in, you know, when I come to the Gambia, I hear this talk about X amount of the population are in agriculture. And yet, what you find is that a lot of children go through schooling having no idea about what agriculture is all about. But something you just touched on there, but they will produce what they eat. So what they've started doing is that schools now have 
each one their own gardens exactly. where they grow stuff. Some grow enough yeah. to consume and sell. Yeah. And they get used to the idea of farming and modern farming methods. Exactly. Any chance of something like that being introduced in the Gambia? That's what we, that's what we are trying to, because they, where they are, they can produce rice all year round. Mm -hmm. They can produce vegetables mm -hmm. all year round. So mm -hmm. they will be able to do that. And not only that, we, because uh, we, there's, there's, uh, we coming, uh, there's a paradigm shift in our higher education system, mm -hmm. Entrepreneurship right. also will be embedded in whatever they do. We prepare the student that once you graduate from this center, you don't need to come and wait for, let's say, Ministry of Agriculture to employ you. Because that's not the objective of training you. If you are employed, that's it. But if not, you are already prepared to employ yourself or even create a job so that you employ others. You take charge of your destiny. You see, I mean, you know, you, you've given us features. I think already you've hinted at some of the features of what I might, what I might call your vision. Just expand that. What, what is really your vision of higher education? You've touched on some of them. The idea of being applied. You should yes. be able to do it. And then you, you diversify, go to the hinterland. Just give us your vision of higher because education. What the the vision there? of higher education is, a, is, a, is education be used as a tool for liberation. Mm -hmm. yeah. That higher education will, will fulfill its mandate if it liberates the people. Sounds like Amilcar Cabral. Yeah. <laughs> See? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's the idea. Yeah, giving the them yeah. the, uh, sure. the opportunity, you know, to take charge of their destiny. Mm -hmm. You see, Douglas said, education is the road to freedom. Sure. Right? So when, once you give people the tools, they will never be the same again. And that's it. You see, when I look at, uh, you know, the vegetables, the quantity of vegetables that we import here mm -hmm. from, we are not, not from America or from Europe, just our neighbors here. Right. And the same, and what, is, what is, just tell me, what is, how comes it is possible in Senegal and not in the Gambia? Are we cursed? Mm -hmm. What have we done to God? Mm -hmm. so, we, it is, so it means that it is possible. I believe that science is science. Sure. So we need to now... Uh, put our house in order and uh, f fix that. The other thing also is making sure that uh, uh, people understand that education is an investment. And uh, by doing so, by uh, uh, putting more investment in education and creating opportunities, like uh, the as we talk about the, uh, the uh, some of the students who want to have the opportunity, but then because of uh, challenges, uh, they could not because it's expensive here and there. They're coming from very, I won't say poor, but modest background and so on. So they will, hence our, our proposal now, which we are working on it, finalizing very soon, uh, is the student loan scheme right, yes, and so on. Right. And then the Tashian Higher Education Trust Fund. Mm -hmm. You see, the system needs to be there sure. because we are running public institutions to mold the leaders of today and tomorrow. Not only tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Today, because development is now. Sure. We cannot postpone it. We are taking charge. That's, that's, the, that's the mindset. That's the, that, because education needs to be, uh, needs, to, it needs to respond to the aspirations of the youths. Sure. Look at this country, 60% or 63% as youths. youths. If, if you do not look at that and fix that, mm. then you are sitting on a time bomb. Sure. You, know, you know, Professor, so just, uh, yeah. go on. Uh, it was to amplify on the vision, mm. uh, because um, Mr. Mboj was saying, Let's have the vision. So if I were to say to you, um, at the end of three, four, five years, name some concrete things that would have happened that for you would be considered a success as fulfillment of the, that vision. Well, for me, the first thing is, the, it might not uh, be, uh, be seen as a vision or whatever, but very, very important thing, and that's going to 
decongest the entire system mm -hmm. is Farababanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. University of the Gambia, okay. Farababanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you are working on. To uh, the uh, regional Tibet centers, right. yeah. for them to emerge, people see them f functioning. And uh, especially the, uh, the CRR one, for that matter, that model, we need to cre make it happen. The other thing also is the student loan scheme. It's going to be an act. We want to have it happen sure. in this country. And, but we will also maintain uh, the scholarship uh, aspect of it uh, for it to be for excellence. We want but to send but it. So the loan scheme would be for all tertiary, yes. or higher what education, university exactly. students, or those who go exactly. to Tibet. So um, what we want to do, but we want to also uh, at least have uh, a certain number uh, for, for the scholarship, but for excellence. And we want to send a clear message to the youth out there who are ready to work very hard. And we just want to tell them, if you want your parents not to bother about paying one dollar, even one dollar for you, just work hard at sc in school. Then you will be given free scholarship. You don't have to pay a single button. Mm -hmm. But then if you don't do that, then you have some challenges here and there, then you can come also and we will still give you uh, a, a loan sure. then so that you can uh, have your, your education. The other thing also is the, the uh, tertiary uh, uh, education trust fund. Mm -hmm. Trust fund that will be there to support these tertiary and higher education institutions in their programs. But it will not be uh, free money. Right. People need to come up with, with programs, tangible ones, you know, good ones, bankable ones. Then now you uh, uh, send it to the, the body out there to, that will now scrutinize and later come up with programs. That's what happened in other, in other countries and so on, sure. among yes. other issues. Um, that, that was going to be real, actually my, my, my question that we, we for a long time, you'll have some of these sort of high you know, mm. schemes, <laughs> as, as it were. But somehow, the crisis of implementation, as Paul Kagame called it, that, that is really our problem. But now I will shift. I think you, you've answered that. When you look at the conversion rate from secondary to tertiary, <laughs> it seems to me, because yeah. when you look at it, um, was exams, about yeah. 15,000, whatever thousands, and then university intake, 1,625. 16, yeah. Of course, other tertiary institutes. I was in one. The last time I checked, we had 73. <laughs> they yeah. will probably absorb their thousand or so. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when you look at it, I mean, maybe 13, 12, 13,000, yeah, perhaps maybe. not sure. enrolled in, 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 in any tertiary institution. That must be worrying. That must be a challenge that one must face. Yeah, that's the reason why I'm saying we there's need to invest. You know, uh, in, to invest in higher education. You see, the, uh, it's very interesting. Just, I don't need to go to your, uh, mention Europe or America. Mm -hmm. Just in our neighbors here. I told even some of our uh, uh, partners, don, do, uh, do, do, donors, I told them, you know, you intervene in our neighboring countries in higher education. Cape Verde. Yeah, <laughs> Cape Verde, <laughs> Senegal, <laughs> Cote d'Ivoire. Yep. There's serious intervention in tertiary and higher education. Yep. Yep. But for us here, emphasis was more on basic and secondary education. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you see the, I, I said. So it depends on the recipient. Yeah, but, but you see the, you see, uh, for me, I always go back to uh, the archives. I, once, once I see this, I try to look at the, uh, where it started. Mm -hmm. I told you, uh, this is what is a, it's a colonial uh, legacy that, we na that needs to be broken. And that's my p uh, op uh, uh, opinion, which I shared with all the donors, mm -hmm. that there will never be serious development in this country. People will be wasting their time if we do not invest in tertiary and higher education. This is where you produce the, the team that will really champion the development of this country. All developed countries, that's what they did. So if you want to develop the Gambia and you don't invest in this area, what type of de sustainable development do you want to produce? Look. But See this this no. table alone. <laughs> this is Tibet. <laughs> of course. You see the decoration, the design. This is Tibet. 
Look at the camera, uh, the cameras that you are having. Me, I cannot manipulate this camera because I am not. I don't have these skills. The, you need people who know how to do this. This is TVET. But when 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 we want to ignore this and so on, what is going to happen? And that's the reason why it, it doesn't surprise you sometimes. You say, Oh, these people like in some of the boys are going like a halisby, you know, and so on. So because they heard millions here and there coming. What I said is a structural problem that we are having. We are getting loans, millions of dollars coming to this country. But then now when it comes now, who are the people executing it? These are non Gambians. Who will be the one now doing the job because we don't have the personnel? I say, but again, you cannot blame and people for saying that all oh, these people need to get chopped. Right. But, 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 but when, you, when you look at the indicators as well, yeah. there is that element no, no, but which perhaps undermines everything. You may have the best laid out plans, but again, when you send the funds, you want to chop this percentage or that, then you undermine the quality you're going to no, deliver. But that also exists. The, the issue is, no, my point is, is the, the, the structural issue. Absolutely. Is that if you Absolutely. want now the money, because what I'm trying to say here yeah. is the money is not staying. Because when that money uh, arrives, it is now paid to others. Uh, in, they are engineers. They are technicians. We, don't, we are not producing yeah, exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. So, and you need... For instance, take your roads. You see? So who are the ones building them? That's, these are that's, the, that's the example I always give. Very clear so example. The the, these are millions of dollars. Absolutely. So it, yes, everywhere it is written, paid to the Gambia, and so millions of dollars. But the money is now paid to somebody, uh, an other group, they will now take it back to their country. Okay. So the money is not mm -hmm. saved. But imagine now. You see, Mr. Mboy, Mr. Derame, all these technicians, well-trained and so on. The money is paid to them. Where are they going to put that, uh, the, uh, those millions? Mm. In our banks. When it is put in our banks, so we, these people have enough money, enough cash. Remember, the interest rate will, will go down. Many people will come because they have enough. You get the point? Mm -hmm. So, and then also, Mr. Uh, Mr. Derame, Mr. Mboy, with their family, they will enjoy. But within that, in, even in the street, because they will come up with projects, they will create employment. So they will employ the youths and all that. So that's how now you have a peaceful nation. Because everybody is engaged. But a country where you know, people are not engaged, they don't have the skills and so on, then that's wh where you create, you have now this insecurity. So higher education is that tool that can regulate that society, mm -hmm. that can bring peace. Uh, higher education should be seen as an instrument of peace, as it's a social regulator, if it is seen as an investment. Sure. And that's why I feel that this, look, even it pains me, uh, you know, the University of the Gambia at Farababanta that we are building, you know, they did not uh, sh show you uh, so the quarters where some of these people are, the workers, the laborers. Right. Most of them, you know, they are there. They are from Guinea, from Sierra Leone, some from Senegal. They are the ones doing the job there. You go to TAF also. He told me last time he employed others out there. Because we, he's looking for people, because this is hands-on. It's not, uh, I have a degree, I have this. No. It's, can, I do, can you do it? Yeah. Can you fix it? The American mindset here. Can you fix it? But, but, but this is really the issue, isn't it? So, and lots of employ, employers. I used to be in, in, in a tertiary institute and would constantly be meeting employers to know what the deficiencies are after they leave our institutes and go to the, to the, to the world of work. Mostly w what you get is that um, um, the attitudinal issues, people tell you that all the time, or even people who construct us, they come and tell you, hey, look, I employ somebody else from the coast, you know, the region, and they will come and willing, be willing to work. I employ the Gambian and he doesn't. So there is a certain conversation that we need to have amongst ourselves. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we need to give them skills, but mm -hmm. you find that most of them will not even go into that. 
I realized that recently, mm -hmm. because of the stigma in it, mm -hmm. you had this um, MOU, was it? You, you, you had some kind of agreement with, with ACE mm -hmm. to provide um, awareness tools, campaign yes, tools, yes, as yes. it were, in, 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 in mm -hmm. Tibet. Mm -hmm. So just... Yeah, no, no, because what, we, what, we, what is happening is, uh, for a long time, you know, we've agreed that, uh, you know, this the, the Tibet uh, is uh, what we call in our local parlance, uh, wacharasu. Yes. You know, so nobody wants to go yeah. there and so on and so forth. When, when you finish work, you have to go wash your hands. Yeah. So, so manual. So <laughs> manual. in other words, uh, this manual work uh, it should not be for, 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 uh, for you. So you, you should be in an office, you know, with air condition and so on and so forth. People forget. Give t I always give them the case. take the case of Taf, and he told that he was a carpenter. But Taf can pay how many ministers every month? He he earns. He is a millionaire. You see, so but he was a carpenter. But look at even the uh, you see Mendy tailoring. Uh, yes, Malik Mendy. Malik Mendy. Yeah. Look at what he's doing. Yeah. Just uh, with his machine, he started. Absolutely. But now look at him. Yeah. How many people is he employing? 55. You see? <laughs> so this is the solution. People don't understand that sure. even some, some of these people from the, the Tibet are earning more than the minister. Sure. That's the reality. And I'm telling the Gambian people to understand. He's more than a minister, but people don't know. Because they see the minister there with the, you know, and so on and so forth. I'm saying, yes, if you stick to what is given to you. I don't know, because you might have other opportunities. So you might be a director there, a deputy permanent secretary somewhere, and so on. You have other, but I'm just telling you, based on what you have, your, your, your pay, you see, you know, these people are, are more than you. That's so it. And there doesn't it help so really for us to make the distinction? Mm. You can make money if you want, yes. but that is it. You go yeah. to the private sector, you do it for yourself. Yes, you yes. don't use public office to yes, make yeah. money. Yes. There's that confusion see, there. Yeah, so, so we want to go to public office to be So you see, if it is public office, then that one you cannot. Sure. No. This is where you get more. And all these people have, are, are, uh, are getting more than the rest. Look. You see, he even went to uh, Nigeria and built estates there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, look at all these people, the work that they are doing, and so on and so forth. So there are many, many options. You see, the mindset must change. Look at, uh, you know, the, uh, also the entrepreneurship aspect of it. Yeah. That's what we are trying to inculcate. You see, we, we, NACA has uh, started uh, the process. We, uh, ask NACA to do so and uh, we will be also meeting the stakeholders very soon and also uh, because will it come a time when no tertiary and higher education institutions in this country will, will be allowed to operate if you do not have entrepreneurship uh, embedded in your program okay. the mindset yeah. and if you take for instance uh, the Q group look 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 at uh, the way uh, you know, Mr. Ja and uh, his team, the way they started. Mm. And look at where they are now. The different opportunities here and there. The mindset. Sure. You see, education, high education for that matter, allows the individual to dream. And to dream big. It is not a crime to dream. If uh, uh, Mr. Ja did not dream, we will not be here today sitting because this opportunity will not have taken place, among others. <laughs> and the, 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 the uh, me tough and others also, the Malin Mendy and so on and so forth. They dreamt. Sure. So we want to create an opportunity where education allows the individual to dream for the emergence of a new citizenry. Yes, so, so we're coming to, uh, towards the end, so hopefully these success stories will inspire people out there to see what is pos possible. Um, we've come to the end, maybe one, one or two minutes. So as Adi, you, you asked the question earlier, yes. looking forward now, what, what, what should we expect to see really? In, in the now country? the, uh, as I said, uh, right now we want to our major issue is to see how to move uh, the, uh, the first phase of the Farababanta campus. And then we now, 
uh, work will start also in the coming uh, uh, month, uh, just weeks in fact before the end of uh, you know, for the second phase for uh, the faculty of uh, uh, faculty of law and also uh, school of uh, agriculture and environmental sciences will also uh, start the work uh, for this uh, use it okay it will take 18 months okay. and uh, the earth force phase will be out and uh, in november we will start now the uh, the work for the other regional centers and we start rolling out thank you thank you very much uh, i'm professor Ampere gomez minister of um, higher education research science and, and technology for joining us today and thank you thank to you. my co-pilot <laughs> thank you um thank you very much to our viewers until the next time well i hope that the sisekunda will be back <laughs> well anyway till next time goodbye <laughs>